What's up guys, welcome to my uh, fifth auto coding tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be covering cases. Um, and it's just like it sounds. Uh, so, um, yeah, i got to think of an example how to say this. Uh, we'll have a variable and if the case is that it's 1, then something will happen in the case that it's 2. And so, so on and so forth. Um, it's just like if-thens. So, but it's a little more organized, and uh, this it's mostly used for when you have multiple scenarios that can occur. And I just want to um, show you guys how to use them. Um, and here you have variable or var equals one. That's just the first if then. Um, so if var equals one, then will you'll start the case and you use switch. This right here, this function switch, switches to the variable that you're um, involving with the certain cases. And I'm using rderp. And I name my variables really weird, but uh, rderp here equals 3. Um, and the th I have three cases along with it. And the first case, you use it with case. Case 1, it's essentially saying that um, in the case that it equals 1, um, then message box, it equals 1. And then in the case that it equals two, message box, it's two. And then so on with uh, case three, it equals three. And then you end that switch with uh, end switch. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what it's like. So um, I'm going to run it. Okay, so there's the message box three. So in it's it took var, and since it equals one, it executed the switch statement. And in the switch, it uh, evaluated what r derp equals. It equals three. And it went through the different um, possibilities, and it went through one, two, and three. Since it equaled three, it executed the function or whatever uh, lines of code that's under that case. So it's um, yeah, it's just like that. Um, you can even add another uh, switch. Like here, I'll make another variable, a derp equals two. Just copy and paste this up below it. So we have one more, and this is going to be with a derp. So since a derp is 2, we'll have the same case. If it's 1, it's going to be 1. 2, which it is, it's going to show this message box. And if it's possibility is 3. Well, why did, that didn't count. Uh, if it's 3. See, I have trouble talking like this. In the video. Anyway, um, so it's going to first switch to r derp and see the possible scenarios and then go to a derp. Make sure everything's okay. So here you go. So it evaluated our derp, and since it's three, it popped up with three, case three. And then it switched to a derp right after, and um, since it equal two above, then it did whatever the case two suggested. So yeah, um, pretty fun to use. Uh, you, you use them with uh, GUIs a lot. So like when you have a GUI window, and um, you'll have a function called GUI get message. Oops. This function right here allows the wind the GUI window to be pulled for any changes, like if you press a button, etc. And then you'll have a case if button one equals um, you'll have it like this. I'm showing you just real fast. You'll have the message equal whatever message happens on the GUI. Like it's gonna constantly it's gonna be in a while loop. So it's constantly going to be pulling the GUI for any changes that occur. And it's going to switch to message, the GUI get message function, and then case button one. That there suggests that if button one, um, assuming that button one is a variable on the GUI like a button, if button one is um, pressed, that's how it works with GUI. So it's just case button one. So if it's pressed, this will occur. And I'm just, yeah, that's what happens with GUIs. I'm just showing you how they're similar. So, yeah, with GUIs, you're always, in all, almost all the time, you, well, at least me, I use switch and end switch with um, GUIs because it's, it's more organized and I always have a crap load of stuff on my GUIs as well, a lot of objects. But, um, so that tutorial, this tutorial covers cases, um, and I hope it helped and I hope you enjoyed.